But Friday morning, uh, the 26th week, today's gospel's rough, Luke. But I, I thought when I read it this morning, just in preparation for this, uh, this, um, this series of uh, videos, I was struck, this thing seems to me a stark warning for us in our own culture, Western culture. I'll read it to you. Keep that in mind when you're hearing it, okay? I think you get it. Jesus said, Woe to you, Chorazin. Chorazin, no, I'll say that. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to the heavens? Think of America. You will, be go, you will go down to the netherworld. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me to church. And I think that's a, the, 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 role, the role of Christianity in the West, its formation, its building of its culture, its sustaining of its culture by rejecting it. Yeah. by rejecting it, I think. Um, we're asking for the roof to come down on us. We'll get what we pay for. Maybe I was saying it all wrong. I do worry about... I'm a, kind of... I do worry about our civilization and our culture. I do, genuinely. Not that I think I'm going to suffer under it. I may be suffering already, but I believe in cultures. I believe in the movements of cultures. And when I see the direction that we're going in as we abandon our Judeo-Christian roots. We are a plant without depth. We're gonna die because we don't have the nurture of the soul, the soul of our culture. We have the mind in a way, we have the material in a true sense. That's not enough. There's a deep inner spirit that belongs to our civilization. It's Judeo-Christian foundations. And that we have more and more been abandoning. I told you that already. I said it, I think, a couple of days ago. See? Cultures die from within, not from without. It's, it's in a sense, it, we're, we're running the risk of neo-paganism, of, of losing the, the profound sense of the spirit. Carl Jaspers, who's a psychology philosopher from... He was a Swiss philosopher of the mid-20th century. He said, the spirit has fled the West. The spirit has fled the West. You could see it in Europe, the two great wars. Where was the spirit? I mean, when you see, see the abandonment of faith produce monstrosity, it produced monstrosity. I mean, that, I don't know any word for it. We produce the most heinous monsters in history. We make Genghis Khan look like a kindergarten teacher. I'm thinking of Hitler was the worst, but Stalin was no uh, kindergarten teacher. And Mussolini was a buffoon, but he was a buffoon that was tyrannical. Yeah. That was all within the same generation, roughly speaking. And look at the enslavement that they gave to the people, their own people and the horror of wars they led their people into. There was only any kind of semblance of justice in any of that, which was hardly, this is what the Italians did to Muslim when they caught up with him. In a way, then they shot him, you know, in Milan, and they hung him by his feet like a pig. That's all he was. But Hitler blew his own brains out. He didn't even come up for trial. He never had to face the horrors he created. Stalin died in his bed. They were monsters. They were monsters. They abandoned their faith. Stalin was a seminarian, and both Hitler and Mazzi Mussolini were Catholics. Gave up the faith and made them. Hitler made himself a messianic figure. The incredible thing was who took him so seriously? The German people. See, that's the fascination of evil. It's a danger. We get captivated almost by the demonic. 
And that's the story of Europe, especially the story of Germany in the 1930s and 40s. Yeah. I'm not condemning them, nor am I criticizing them. I am being critical, but I see that what happened there could happen anywhere. I'm not being arrogant or condescending to anyone. I say it with fear that we could do it here too. We could become, if it could happen in Germany, Northern Europe, it could happen anywhere, anywhere, you know. And then you reap what you sowed, which is horror. You know, there's a line, it, it's, it does, what the heck is the movie? Meryl Streep gets the line of, oh, I can't remember it. Doggone, she gave, when God wants to punish you, he answers your prayers. He gives you what you want. <laughs> no, that's not right. But you get it. It's a great line. But sometimes God can't do anything about it without taking your freedom from you, and he won't take our freedom from us. Hence, we can get what we chose, and it's horrifying. See? You might get what you chose, but it's horrifying. Yeah, anyway, I think about these things. I think, I don't know if I wasted your time just now. I think about these a lot. And I think we are at a key juncture in history. As much as I think we are reaching global Christianity, I also see there is a tremendous need for the re-evangelization of the West, just what John the 23rd saw. After the 20th century, who can argue? When messianic figures like Hitler and Mussolini and Stalin emerge, it's possible. If that can happen then, it can happen again. That's the trouble. When the faith loses, when, when one loses the sense of the transcendent faith, one seems to aspire power, espouse power. And power without morality and a spirituality of human goodness and decency becomes tyrannical. So serving tyrannic tyranny and in the end, self-destruction. I think of the image of Hitler in a bunker blowing his brains out. I think of it more crudely, sticking a gun in his mouth. He led the world to horror. In the end, he blew his brains out. Yeah. Anyway, just a reflective thought. Just thinking about the world we live in. I see it with hope because I look in the face of tomorrow when I see the children in my class. How could you not believe in the resilience of life in tomorrow? I see these young people, they're beautiful. They are so special. I gotta believe in tomorrow because I believe in them. And I believe in the gospel. Well, that's the truth. I told my kids today in class this morning, I said to them, it's such a privilege for me to be with you. You are so special. They are. They are. They are so special. I told them, don't follow. Lead the world. Lead it. These are Christian young men and women. Come on. Lead the world. You have it. Lead it. Don't follow. Lead it. <laughs>